this lesson will be coming right up. But first, I'd like to take a minute to review what we learned from lesson number one. When some of you got stuck in a corner and didn't know where to go, you did learn that you need to watch the road ahead of you and what comes next. You also learned that by stitching the lesson stitch over and over, that you gain new muscle memory. And that made it a little bit easier to stitch out each time. Like it or not, you also learned how to backtrack when you had to go up and down on the centers of the pedals. Some of you didn't feel you were doing a very good job of it, but it got better as you went along. You also learned creativity when you filled your block in with something other than the stitch we were doing. The one thing I hope you really learned during that lesson is that you're way better than you think you are. This is for all of you who have tried. When most people look at a whole cloth quilt, they see the beautiful feathers and other designs that have been stitched into it. One of the things that allows these designs to really stand out is the use of a background stitch. And we're not talking a meander or a stippling stitch. We're going to be doing the orange peel, otherwise known as the cathedral window. The orange peel stitch is a fairly basic stitch that starts out with three steps and we'll go over that. Step one starts at the lower left hand corner of the box as a gentle swing out towards the center about the distance of your presser foot and then curves gently back into the top left corner again. Step two starts from that point another gentle, gentle curve down towards the center and then arcing back up to the top right corner. And step three goes from the top right corner with a slight arc back down to the bottom right corner. Okay, according to our directions, we're supposed to draw out a grid. They're all one inch squares, six across, and six down. To make it easier to work with the three layers, let's stitch around that square so that you won't have to worry about any pins while you're doing the actual design. You can choose to do this on your, your domestic machine with a walking foot. You can do it with a free motion foot or if you're going to sit down like I am right now, I like to use rulers, but again you can do that by eye. Totally up to you. We're going to finish this square by finishing up down at the bottom left hand corner of the first square. Okay, let's start. Step one, step two, step three. Swing up, swing over, swing down. Swing up, swing over, swing down. It almost reminds you of ballroom dancing with three steps up, over, and down, up, over, and down. Now comes the fun part. We're going to be like a bunny and hop, hop, hop back to the beginning. This is step four on your handout. And it's hop, hop, hop. Hop, hop. Now trace along your line down to the bottom corner again where we're ready to start. For the sake of time, I'm stitching this out in my block too, but I've greatly sped it up so that you can see a couple things I want to point out to let you know how well you're doing with this stitch. The first row is done just like we did the row in the film previously. 
Now, as you add rows, and each row will start, start at the bottom left-hand side, you'll notice that you're starting to see flowers forming. Now this next row is going to show you something else. Along with the flowers, if you look at it another angle, you'll start to see circles. If you're seeing flowers and circles, that gives you a good indication that you've got your stitches pretty consistent as far as the size of your arcs when you're stitching them because that is what you're supposed to see and you've done a great job. So I hope you've liked this lesson. I can't wait to see your stitch outs. Remember that's part of our deal. You're going to post them on our Facebook page so that we can see your progress and everybody can share with what a great job you've done. If you have any questions, you all know where to reach me. So until then, I'll see you next time.